How many sets should you really be doing to maximize muscle growth? Is it just one all out set to failure or do you need to push through 20 sets with high volume? The fitness world is divided. Some say less is more, while others claim the more, the better. But here's the twist. What if both sides are missing the mark? What if you've been doing too much or too little and it's secretly holding back your gains? In today's video, we're diving deep into one of the most hotly debated topics in muscle building. How many sets you actually need to achieve maximum growth? We'll break down the latest scientific studies, clear up the confusion, and give you a clear answer that could change the way you train. Here's the best part. It's not as extreme as most people think, and by the end of this video, you'll have a practical, science-backed plan you can start using today to dial in the perfect set range for your goals. Let's get started. Understanding sets and volume. When it comes to building muscle effectively, not all sets are created equal. So, what exactly is a set? Well, it's a series of reps, typically 8 to 12, performed with enough intensity to leave you just a few reps short of failure. This isn't about simply going through the motions, it's about pushing your muscles to the edge, where they're practically begging for mercy. Research shows that this level of intensity is where the magic happens, as your muscle fibers are stressed enough to trigger serious growth. But when we discuss weekly sets, we're looking at the total number of sets performed for a specific muscle group over the course of a week. Here's where it gets tricky. It's not just about hammering out isolation exercises. Compound movements like the bench press engage multiple muscle groups at once. Your chest, triceps, and front deltoids all get a piece of the action. So, does each set of bench press count for all three muscles? Technically, yes, but here's the catch. They aren't all being hit equally. This is a common pitfall. Counting every set of bench press as a full set for your triceps can lead to serious imbalances. Think about it. Your triceps are definitely working, but they're not the main focus. For well-rounded growth, you need to differentiate between direct and indirect sets. While the bench press is a powerhouse move for your chest, it doesn't deliver the same impact on your triceps. That's why exercises like skull crushes or overhead tricep extensions are essential. They zero in on the triceps, giving them the dedicated attention they need to thrive. So how should you count these sets? Consider each set of bench press as one full set for your chest, but only half a set for your triceps. This way, you're not overestimating the volume for your smaller muscle groups and can craft a more balanced workout plan. This nuanced approach helps prevent overtraining or undertraining any muscle group, allowing you to optimize your growth without spending unnecessary hours in the gym. The science of optimal weekly sets. So what does the science really say about how many sets you should be doing each week to maximize muscle growth? Let's start with a groundbreaking 2017 meta-analysis that rocked the fitness world. It examined 15 different studies, comparing 1 to 5 sets, 5 to 9 sets, and 10 or more sets per muscle group per week. The results? Those performing 10 or more sets per week saw the greatest gains, leading many to believe that more volume always means better results. But here's the twist. New research suggests that adding more sets doesn't always translate to more muscle. Now it's important to note that this 2017 study primarily included beginners and those with minimal training experience. While 10 or above sets proved effective for these groups, what about experienced lifters? A 2022 study took it further, categorizing weekly set volumes as low, or less than 12, moderate, 12 to 20, and high, greater than 20. It found that both moderate and high volumes produce similar muscle growth, with 10 to 20 sets per week being the sweet spot for most muscle groups. Exceeding 20 sets, however, can backfire, potentially stalling your progress due to recovery issues. But the debate doesn't stop there. Some research indicates that pushing weekly sets to 30 or even 45 can lead to greater hypertrophy. For instance, a 2022 study comparing 16, 24, and 32 weekly sets found that while all training volumes increased muscle thickness and strength, 32 sets led to the most significant gains in muscle thickness and lower body strength. Sounds like a green light for high volume training, right? But before you start loading up on extra sets, consider the opposing evidence. Further research indicates that exceeding this volume can lead to diminishing returns, or worse, overtraining and stalled progress. For example, another 2022 study looked at resistance training volumes of 12, 18, and 24 sets per week. It found that moderate volume, around 18 sets, resulted in the greatest improvement in back squat 1RM. Interestingly, variations in set numbers didn't significantly affect muscle thickness or fat-free mass in highly trained individuals. 
So why do these studies show conflicting results? It likely comes down to individual factors such as experience level, recovery capacity, and training intensity, which we'll dive into next. Remember, your optimal set range isn't a one-size-fits-all formula. It's shaped by various key factors. To truly maximize your gains, you need to consider how these nuances apply to your unique situation. Let's explore what really determines your ideal set volume. Factors affecting optimal set range. Let's dive into a crucial aspect of hypertrophy training, individual variability. One of the most intriguing revelations in exercise science is that everyone's response to training volume is unique. A 2019 study brought this to light in a surprising way. Researchers had participants train each leg with different volumes, one with six to nine sets per week and the other with 15 sets. After eight weeks, they found that roughly a third of participants experienced more growth with the lower volume, another third responded better to the higher volume, and the final third showed similar growth with both. This study drives home a critical point. While general guidelines can provide a solid foundation, personal experimentation is the key to unlocking your full potential. So, why do these differences occur? It all comes down to how your body handles the stress of training, your muscle fiber composition, recovery capacity, and even your nervous system adapt differently based on genetics, training experience, and lifestyle factors. This explains why some people thrive on high volume programs, while others feel burnt out and see better results with fewer sets performed closer to failure. It's not just about hitting a specific number, it's about finding the sweet spot that suits your unique physiology and goals. And let's not forget, the quality of each set is just as crucial as the number of sets you perform. If you're cutting corners on form or stopping short of failure, adding more sets won't do you any favors. Schoenfeld's 2017 meta-analysis emphasizes that real muscle growth happens when sets are taken close to or at failure. But here's the reality. Many lifters don't reach that point, either because they quit too soon or use poor form to grind out extra reps. Dialing back on volume while focusing on perfect form and pushing each set to its absolute limit can often lead to more growth than ever before. Think about it. Executing fewer, high-quality sets could give you better results than endless mediocre ones. Rest intervals are another game-changer when it comes to determining your ideal set volume. If you're taking short breaks, less than two minutes, your muscles might not fully recover, which makes each subsequent set less effective. This can lead to doing more sets to make up for the lack of quality in each one. On the other hand, longer rest intervals of two to five minutes allow your muscles to recover more completely, making every set count. A 2022 study by Longo et al. found that resting for three minutes between sets resulted in greater muscle gains compared to just one minute, even when performing fewer sets. So, if you're someone who likes to take longer breaks, the lower end of the 10 to 15 set range could be perfect for maximizing your gains. These factors all influence how many sets you should do each week to build muscle. If you're dialed in on these, you can make the most out of every set, and you won't have to spend endless hours in the gym chasing gains that aren't coming. Practical Guidelines For most lifters, aiming for 12 to 20 weekly sets per muscle group is a solid research-backed recommendation. But if you're just starting out, keep it between 9, 12 sets per muscle group per week. Why? Because as a beginner, you'll see rapid gains in muscle size and strength, thanks to your heightened sensitivity to training. But remember, beginners also experience more muscle damage and need longer recovery times. Sticking to a moderate volume helps you maximize growth without burning out or risking injury. As you gain experience, it's time to fine tune your volume based on your goals and recovery capacity. Research shows that longer rest periods, think two to five minutes, can help you optimize your gains. Why? Because more rest means more recovery, allowing you to lift heavier and get more out of each set. But if you're someone who prefers shorter rest intervals, under 90 seconds, you might need to ramp up your weekly sets to get similar results. This high volume approach can be effective, but it's not without challenges. You'll spend more time in the gym and deal with greater fatigue, so make sure it aligns with your schedule and energy levels. If you choose the high volume route, spread your sets out over more training days to manage fatigue and boost recovery. Instead of squeezing 30 sets into two days, try distributing them across four or five days. This not only helps manage fatigue, but also allows for more frequent muscle activation, which can lead to better overall growth. Think of it as feeding your muscles smaller. 
more frequent meals instead of one giant feast. Hitting a plateau can be frustrating, but it's often just your body's way of saying it's adapted to your current routine. So how do you know if you're stuck? If you've been training consistently and haven't seen noticeable gains in size or strength for several weeks, it's time to switch things up. This can be especially challenging for low responders, those who find it hard to grow despite putting in the effort. One effective way to break through a plateau is to increase your training volume by about 20%. For example, if you're currently doing 15 sets per muscle group, bump it up to 18 sets. Research shows that this kind of incremental increase can reignite growth. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to building muscle. It's about finding the sweet spot that works for your body. So, experiment with your set volume and rest periods, and don't be afraid to adjust as needed. Pay attention to how your body responds and make changes based on what you see in the mirror and feel in the gym. If you found this helpful, make sure to check out these two videos. They're packed with tips to help you fine tune your training and break through any plateaus holding you back. Remember, it's all about consistency and smart training. Keep crushing it and I'll catch you in the next one.